After the tragic shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, across the country, people are trying to find ways to make communities safer. In New York City, police hope to catch illegal gun carriers with full body scanners. The device is called terahertz imaging detection. It works by scanning a targeted person head to toe and can detect when someone is carrying a gun. Well, as the scanners do its job, those targeted have no idea they're being scanned. So is this a new way to keep our streets safer or is this an invasion of privacy? To discuss, I'm joined now by Danny Panzella of Truth Squad TV. Danny, great to have you on. Thanks so for uh, can you tell us more about this new technology and how exactly it will be used? Well, that's still up in the air. The NYPD says they're studying it, how exactly they can implement it. Uh, early reports were that they were going to be mounting these scanners in trucks or the back of police cars. And as they patrol the streets, they'd be scanning the passenger, uh, the pedestrians, rather, uh, walking up and down New York City streets. And if they see something that resembles a gun, then that, they would use that as their, justifiable, uh, their, just, their reasonable suspicion uh, to perform a search. So Ray Kelly, the police commissioner, is saying this is going to actually reduce stop and frisks because they'll only have to stop and frisk people that they actually see have weapons. Uh, but we uh, who, have, who fight uh, NYPD injustices know that this will be used as an excuse to stop and search anybody because now anything can, can look like a weapon, uh, anything can look like drug paraphernalia. If I'm carrying a pen, are they going to say it's a syringe uh, or a knife? And now, the, now they have a, a legal justification that covers them to perform a stop that really would be illegal otherwise. So uh, this technology, it doesn't sound like this technology is very accurate where they, whatever it detects, they know in fact that it is a gun. Well, it, obviously the closer the subject is to the, to the technology, uh, the, probably the more accurate of a visual they will get. Uh, but no, I mean, if you're scanning as you're driving up and down the streets, uh, you know, people are moving, it's going to be very difficult. To, to really accurately, I mean, obviously the shape of a gun is going to be more uh, obvious than a pen, you know, but they're not only looking for guns. Gun confiscations as a result of stop and frisk is like a 0.01%. So the majority of stop and frisks basically yield uh, drug paraphernalia, you know, things of that nature, small weapons like, like knives that are maybe a little bit too long uh, to fall within the law, that type of stuff. So. You know, to, to say that this is going to stop guns is really disingenuous. Um, but there's, there's just the issue of it's a, a, an invasion of privacy. There's no warrants involved. People don't even know they're being virtually searched with this technology. So, uh, so that's a big issue in itself, um, you know, this whole that they're supposed to have uh, permission, I guess, when people, when police stop you and conduct these searches, um, there's supposed to be some form of evidence, but I guess in this case it kind of gives them a free pass. Is that what you're saying? That's right. The, the scanner itself can act as the evidence, so all they need to say is, well, it looked like a gun on the scanner or it looked like a knife on the scanner. That gave us the justification to stop this person, and then we found nothing. Uh, you know, so they can blame it on the technology. It becomes a scapegoat. Right. Um, going along with this justification that it will make us safer, I mean, in some scenarios, I, I guess it can because they will be, I presumably, be able to identify people that actually are carrying weapons. Uh, do you think it's worth giving up some of our freedoms in the name of safety, especially in the wake of some of these tragic shootings that we've been seeing? Absolutely not. The, the NYPD's own numbers prove that they are not confiscating guns as a result of this policy. So now to just take it a step further and say we're just going to scan everybody without consent and without any kind of evidence uh, under the guise of keeping us safer is, is just, it's absolutely ludicrous and it is a complete violation of the Bill of Rights. All right. You know, it, it's interesting that this comes up because we've been reporting a lot about how basically um, these new things that are popping up that, that kind of infringe on our privacy. And it does seem like we're being filmed everywhere that we go, especially when you're in a, in a big city like New York City. So um, is this just kind of, you know, just the new norm? 
Well, obviously, they're going to encroach on our liberties as, as much as we allow them to. Uh, and that's why I'm encouraging everybody to get in touch with your legislature legislators and tell them we're not going to tolerate being scanned without consent. I mean, at least if, if they're stopping and frisking somebody, that person has a, the uh, option to assert their rights and say, you don't have the right to uh, stop me unless you have seen me committing a crime or uh, you believe that I just have committed a crime. At least there's some sort of reasonable suspicion. But if they're just stopping people at random now because they have this, this machine that they can use as their scapegoat, uh, it, this will just be one more encroachment, and we have to protect our liberties. There's really no, uh, there's, the, there's no justification for it. I really, it, it actually infuriates me, uh, because this is go, this, this stop and frisk uh, tool that they call it uh, is only being used in certain neighborhoods, and it's not, it's, it, it's not an equal application of the law. So there's, there's really, there's so many problems with it. Not to mention the health problems that come along with the terahertz uh, scanners. Uh, the MIT put out a report saying that terahertz waves actually tear apart DNA. That's the phrase they use. So there's a, a, a huge health risk that should be studied before these are implemented as well. Wow, and we are seeing the backlash. Um, just recently, the TSA news that they're gonna be removing those, those controversial scanners that they put into air, to airports across the country. They are now removing those. So we are seeing a backlash to these kinds of uh, technologies that people find invasive. I want to ask you, um, you said there's privacy concerns. Do you see this as a, a, a concern to our constitutional rights, constitutional concerns? Yes, absolutely. It is absolutely uh, an invasion uh, or, or a violation of the Bill of Rights. This is a, an unwarranted search. It's a virtual search. They may not be touching you, but they are searching you uh, without you knowing it, without any proof, without any warrant. The founders were very clear in the wording of the Bill of Rights that if you suspect someone of a crime, you have to go to a judge and get a, a warrant, and it has to be based on very specific information. You need to provide, you need to say, I want to search their person because I believe they're carrying a gun for, for X, Y, Z reasons. It's not just, well, we just think he's a criminal because he's wearing baggy pants, so we want to search him. Wow. Uh, do you fear or anticipate that this could become the norm, uh, a new method that police departments across the country are going to implement? Absolutely. This is part of a federalization campaign. And the NYPD serves as a model for police departments, not only in our country, but all over the world. So they it, basically what they do is they beta test these technologies. You know, there's a hundred other things that they're testing uh, right now, including uh, iPhone apps that actually facially recognize, they can scan your face and uh, scan your eye and take a biometric reading of your eye. And then they put that in their database. They're testing that right now, the NYPD. This is all coming from grants from the Homeland Security Department. Uh, they're funding the technology. It's a way for the federal government to take control of police departments. They buy influence with, with saying, well, we're going to give you the latest crime-fighting tools, this, this technology that you'd never be able to afford on your own. We're going to give it to you. All you have to do is send all the information back to us. And, and they do that through the NYPD Intelligence Division. Mm -hmm. Uh, which wow. is a fusion center. Very uh, interesting and eye-opening. I uh, appreciate you coming on and telling us all about it. Unfortunately, we are out of time. That was Danny Panzella from Truth Squad TV. And we are going to leave it off there. But